okay am i audible let me know yeah so don't worry about the size of this i will share this pdf uh, in the in the i mean institute's whatsapp because lot of information is there and even all this information is excellent this week's current affairs are having lot of information okay yes now <clears throat> you know the ambitious program of central government gar jal program gar jal program yeah it is hindi word means uh, har gar jal program means water to every house it is a program of central government and even telangana is also having a program in the name of mission bagiratha with the same aim when you come to the aim of uh, this har gal jal program it aims to supply 55 liters per capita per day lpcd full form is 55 liters per capita per day portable water portable piped water piped water to the households okay so actually earlier what happened the women folk used to all the way walk to an area where water is available they used to carry uh in many forms now the world health organization report says that because of this ambitious program of government of india and also say telangana or other states water borne diseases water borne diseases have decreased there are many water borne diseases many diseases we used to encounter by consumption of uh, a water which is not safe for human consumption when you come to the portable water it is the water safe for the human consumption that is called as portable water of course it is having many parameters including color ph and uh, fluorine content it should not be more it should not be less take the example of nalgonda district in elsewhere nalgonda district in telangana the district is subjected to the fluorosis disease and a unique technique called as nalgonda technique is used to minimize the impact of that uh, fluoride water and even we have discussed in our routine classes mission uh, kakatiya yes mission kakatiya mission bagiratha they are playing a key role in minimize the impact of that disease so what world health organization says it says that it says that because of this program <laughs> the diseases which were earlier caused due to consumption of unsafe water have reduced by which automatically the economic conditions of the rural masses will increase because that amount they can save or they can uh, spend for other purposes even world health organization also observed that the time earlier spent by women folk to carry the water from a long distance now this time is used to use for another constructive purposes so these two points are very important automatically when a burden on the pocket of a person is reduced his economic condition will improve even it will play a key role in poverty elevation so this sort of things very useful for prelims and also mains because nowadays uh, you cannot separate prelims uh, and mains separately i mean you can see the last telangana group on uh, prelims paper it is tougher than the upsc all programs with statements okay yes now the focus of the report the hargar jal report focus on diarrheal disease that is water borne diseases and overall disease burden related to wash wash is a 
what is the full form of wash water sanitation and hygiene and even long back in our current affairs classes we have discussed which district which district in india first attained 100% water connectivity in our earlier classes we have discussed which district in india attained 100% water connectivity for the first time yes last classes even before yes swati garu burhanpur yes bhavani burhanpur we have discussed okay yes theek hai now so they have given uh, i mean lot of uh, statistics so on piped water connection so because of this piped water improving the lives of individuals physically mentally and also financially yes burhanpur now five states including gujarat telangana goa haryana and punjab and three union territories andaman nicobar daman dayu and dadra nagar haveli and puducherry have reported 100% coverage so in telangana we have discussed it is a mission kakatiya program sorry sorry mission bagiratha okay yes now so seeing the achievement of this program government of india wanted to see that by 2024 it is extended to all parts of the country so just now i told you we will reduce the uh, morbidity or death rate because, uh, by consuming the potable water okay now this achievement alone would result in estimated cost savings of 101 billion dollars just now i told you so instead of going to hospital why because by by consuming the, by consuming the unsafe water we used to go to hospital because of disease so we can save lot of uh, uh, water now they have observed that this program is having lot of leverage suppose if government spends 1 dollar the i mean result or the benefit is more than 1 dollar that is 4.3 dollar every dollar invested in sanitation interventions gives a 4.3 dollar return in the form of reduced health care cost no doubt in it even if you are healthy so then only you can come to the class and study if not you will be in hospital again it is a huge burden on your pocket okay so this kind of observations help you to address the main issues and even just now i told you the women will save their valuable time yes in 2018 36% of india's total population including 44% of rural population lacked access to improved drinking water so within no time their access has increased multifold no doubt in it yeah so hargal jal program is under the ministry of jal shakti a new a unique model where pani samitis water committees comprising villages will decide and i told you their aim is to provide 55 liters per capita per day water to the households try to remember that 55 alto also and all these what here uh, i mean mentioned is that because of supply of piped water the disease in the human beings will reduce various types of diseases of course you know in your science classes your sir will tell what are the water bond diseases okay yes ensuring access to clean drinking water improving public health and well being aligned with sdg 6.1 you can see the last uh, if i am not wrong whether group on prelims or upsc they have asked the sub categories in the Uh, sustainable development goals and even I, you, i i i told you several times you go through the chart but the chart is having is, is not having subgroups if i am not uh, wrong so this is how the examiner is asking the question beyond the coaching institutes beyond the books okay and even uh, i posted many youtube videos also in your group about the successful candidates what they are talking about the prelims yes now 
supply of 55 liters of water per person per day to every rural household. So, a nice article with regard to FDI, FII. Okay. See, you are having various, you will receive various investments from foreign countries, various investments. Okay. FDI. FDI is nothing but foreign direct investment. Again, you are having FII foreign institutional investors and again you are having fpi foreign portfolio investors so why i am saying this means in the last upsc prelims question the questions from economics were too deeper and most of the questions are related to the stock market trading especially alpha beta theta you are having a concept which is used in the option trading Call option, put option. Of course, we have discussed the basics, but we have not uh, gone depth because if, if we go through that, it is just like training in uh, uh, stock market activities. Yes, foreign direct investment, foreign institutional investment, and foreign portfolio investment. So when you come to the foreign direct investment, a company or a person will directly invest in India or you will start a company. It is not hot money. Because what is hot money? Hot money is the money which will move from one, one destination to the other based on the profits or uh, the I mean, lucrative business or whatever you say. But this, is, this will be of uh, permanent nature. And they will create physical assets. They will establish the industry by which the... Uh, Employment opportunities in India will also increase. As foreigner is coming to establish an industry in India, automatically he will use the more sophisticated technology by which India will benefit. <laughs> Definitely. Because they will exploit our resources in a judicious manner. No doubt they may carry the profits to their motherland. Of course, some, some communist ideology people say this side of uh, this type of uh, uh, i mean investments by mncs as neo colonialism of course it is their view it may be wrong or it may be right yeah now again fdi flows into the primary market yes they they will directly directly involve into the uh, purchase of uh, land etc and also when you come to the stock market there are two types of markets primary market and also secondary market primary market and secondary market see when you come to the primary market it is a market where a company will issue shares directly to the investors generally it is called as the initial public offer if the company gives for second time it is called as the follow on public offer so here a company may directly purchase land etc and establish an industry and the second source is, suppose take the example of Maruti, only for understanding purpose I am saying, or any company. For the first time, if Maruti comes into the market to sell their stocks, then if 10% of the value of that company of shares, if it is purchased by an entity, foreign entity, it is also called as FDI. It is also called as FDI. Okay, so these 10% they will purchase from the primary market. What is primary market? Where the company will sell its shares to the buyers. It is called as the primary market, IPO or follow on public offer, etc. And you can see last year, if I am not wrong, or last but one year, LIC came to the market and, for, and sold 5% of the stake. Okay, so even they, if, if, they purchase, if, they, if they purchase 10 percent of stake in a company, then also it is called as FDI. Okay, and uh, these FDIs, of course, definitely they will participate in the management, and even uh, I mean they will get the I mean uh, profits. Does not tend to be speculative. Just now I told you which money is speculative, hot money is speculative. Suppose say 
Now, if the Indian stock market is overvalued because of some or other reasons, what they will do? They will sell their stocks in the India and they will go to some other country. So these FDIs are not speculative. Even if this uh, person purchases a 10% of the stake in a company in the uh, IPO, they will have the lock-in period. They will have the lock-in period. They cannot immediately sell the shades uh, on the same day or the second day or the third day. They will have the lock-in period. It is the reason why we call this as a non-speculative investment. See, why I am saying this means you can see the papers. The questions from economics are too tough. If you prepare in this manner, at least you can answer 3 out of 10 or 4 out of 10. At least for in the I mean coming uh, UPSC prelims. Okay? Yes. Now, of course, I told about the uh, it will create employment opportunities. Yes. Now, when you come to the FII, foreign institutional investors. See, you are having many asset management companies which are called as the AMCs. Even in India also, we are having the AMCs. Like Reliance Asset Management Company, uh, Birla or even uh, Religare. You are having many things. So, suppose foreign company, say JP Morgan Chase, etc, etc. What they will do, they will invest in the Indian stock market. They may buy bonds, they may buy debentures or they may buy the shares of the company. And their, their investment is not having any lock-in period. They are not having any lock-in period. Today they will purchase. Tomorrow they may sell. Yeah, sometimes happens. Uh, just I am just I am quoting you an example. I am not supporter of any company or, uh, uh, or opposer of any company. Take the example of uh, Apollo Hospital share. Within one month, the share uh, value increased by 25%. If a if I purchased that stock in the last month, now he is sitting uh, on a profit of 25% in a span of 30 days. He may sell that. Nobody will stop that. So what I mean to say, their investment is speculative. It is hot money. They may go to other countries also. Okay? Short-term investment and invest, invest in financial assets. Of course, not only financial assets, they will also purchase the shares. What is financial asset? Like bond given by RBI or a bonds given by a company. Now, for our understanding purpose, last month Adani has raised a capital to the tune of uh, some thousands of crores. So, FIFs have purchased their bonds. That is the financial asset. And the bond will give a fixed return. Unlike a share, the share value will fluctuate. But the bond value will not fluctuate. The bond will give you the bond or debenture will give you the fixed return. Okay? Yes. And uh, they will invest in the secondary market. That is uh, direct stock market. Uh, don't think only in the secondary market. Even in the primary market also, they may purchase one or two uh, purchase. They may purchase one or two percent of shares. But generally, FIS are interested in the speculative market. If stock market, if they think that stock market is uh, uh, not, I mean, not, lo uh, not looking lucrative or it is risky to invest in stock market because of geopolitical tensions, etc. What they will do? They will invest this, amount, uh, this uh, uh, amount in the bullion. That is, they may purchase gold, silver, etc. also. So purely their motive is profit. It is hot money. They will move this money from one country to other country within a span of time. Okay? Yes. If I is, is eligible for capital gain, what is what is capital gain? If they sell, see today if they purchase the shares of uh, uh, shares in Indian market, if they hold that shares for a certain time, on that income. The, the government of India will impose less tax compared to the, uh, I mean, normal regime tax. So, you are having certain period, three years. If you sell the stocks after three years, the taxation will be very less. That is called as long-term capital gain tax. Of course, time and again, so government will change the rules and regulations. But, yes. Now, what is FPI? 
FPI is the foreign FPI is the foreign portfolio investment. What is meant by portfolio? Suppose now a person is there, big investor, big investor. The best example is the Warren Buffett in America. So he will purchase n number of shares of n companies. So what they will do? They will purchase the shares of the company and keep it in their in their portfolio. That is called as portfolio investment. Uh, investors, they will directly come into the market and purchase the uh, shares of different companies. Though they are very less, say one percent of a company, two percent of a company, etc. Like some, uh, if I am not wrong, uh, one uh, American company, G and G, has purchased the uh, uh, shares of uh, Adani, Adani Enterprises or Adani stocks. That is called as the portfolio investment uh, investment now what happened if a person is having a 10 percent of stake of a company in his port in his portfolio now it is termed as the direct investment many times asked in the examination foreign direct investment okay yes now FDI, of course, just now we have discussed. And uh, these foreign portfolio in his, uh, investors are registered with the SEBI. Of course, we have discussed in our routine classes. We have discussed about the P notes are participatory notes. They will enter into the Indian market with the help of P notes are participatory notes. Now, actually, why this is in news? So you are having one committee, FDI. Definition of FPI and FDI as per Arvind Mayaram Committee 2014. You have to remember this also. One side they will give committees, one side they will give the concept. So Mayaram Committee is, is related to the FDI and FPI. Now actually, SEBI has imposed some rules on this because they wanted to see that the stock market will not collapse or uh, some stocks will not collapse. Take the example of Adani. Adani. Suddenly from 4,126 rupees to uh, 1,000 rupees, it fell within uh, 7 or 8 days, eroding nearly 10 lakh crores of market capital. So SEBI wanted to avoid such kind of things. And you know, SEBI, Securities Exchange Board of India and the Foreign Exchange Management Act, they will uh, uh, deal with such kind of transactions. Okay? So, this uh, now, uh, I mean, SEBI has proposed these foreign investments into low risk and medium risk and high risk. What is high risk? That is hot money. If a, if a FII, foreign institutional investor, is holding major chunk of uh, shares in a single company, say, suppose I am a FII. I am operating from, say, Maldives or Singapore or Mauritius, which are called as the tax events. Okay? Then what happens if I am having huge chunk of shares? I may manipulate the stock price. I may sell or I may purchase. Even if I purchase small quantity also, the stock price will increase. See, actually, what is the uh, what are the allegations made on Adani? By that uh, person who is called as Hindenburg, Hindenburg or Hindenburg. Of course, very sorry, I could not remember his name. Hidden, yeah. What he what he said? He said that yes, Hindenburg. Yes, yes. He said that the stocks of Adani, the shares of Adani, are manipulated to get. Uh, more loan from the banks. Suppose for every person, even if I pledge my stocks with any financial institution, I may get 50 or 60 percent worth of the loan. Suppose if I am having a stock of 100 rupees, if I pledge with them, the banker will give 50 or 60 rupees. Hiderberg says that the stocks of Adani were manipulated. What he is saying? Ad Adani companies got investment from abroad. It is called as ring fencing or something like that one. 
what they did from foreign they have purchased these stocks at a higher value such that they can take more loan from the banks it may be true or it may be false only god knows but one thing what is reality is the valuation of these stocks is high yes sometimes it happens if you go to america there are many stocks which are having higher valuation than our adani also even in india also if i am not wrong there may be stocks which are having the higher valuations it depends on the psychology of the investors human psychology okay so sebi wanted to see that such kind of things will not happen in future it is a reason why it has proposed a legislation for the high risk foreign portfolio investors additional disclosure requirement for high risk fi is holding more than 50% of their equity asset under management in a single corporate group what is the meaning of this don't be intense suppose i am a foreign portfolio investor my fund is 100 crores my fund is 100 crore if out of this 100 crores if i invest 50 crores in a single company then i will be under the lens of sebi or i have to give more and more disclosures the reason is i will have the capacity to rig or manipulate the stock price of that company no doubt see if a person is having 50% of the shares of a company and the free float of that shares in the market will say only 5% automatically if this person if he purchases this remaining 5% automatically there will be a shortage of shares the price will increase after all, everything i mean everything's price depends on supply and demand even our vegetables also as soon as tomato as long as tomatoes were 20 rupees per kg all vegetables were uh, um, available at cheaper rate now when tomato became 50 rupees automatically other vegetables are, have also increased so now the main reason for this legislation is to see that once again the saga uh, like adana will, uh, adani will not happen in future days yeah the existing high risk fpis with an overall holding in the indian equity market of over 25000 crore comply with the disclosures mandated within 6 months of course they were given the time so low risk moderate risk high risk but just you try to remember what is fpi what is fdi what is fii but what happens <clears throat> now of course even the earlier gang even earlier government before modi also took many initiatives to to attract foreign investments now after uh, modi took over the charge as prime minister of india our rank in ease of doing business has increased ease of doing business by by seeing the ease of doing business only foreigners will in, invest in the indian stock markets indian stock markets now why because of various legislation passed by modi government in favorable of investors like uh, insolvency and uh, i mean bankruptcy court many things even some labor laws so uh, passing such kind of things may cause some concern with the fii's or foreign investments so this sort of things will detract from ease of doing investments now why it is in news arctic sea ice so arctic sea ice the cover of the arctic sea ice is decreasing and even the survey is saying that maybe by 2080 or 85 you will not find ice sheet on the arctic sea which will result in abnormal global warming why you know ice we are having a concept called as albedo we are having a concept called as albedo what is meant by albedo that is the reflective power of the sur- of the surface and ice is having excellent reflective power the sun rays will fall 
if sun rays fall on the ice most majority of this uh, heat is again transmitted back reflected back so what happens if ice cover decreases automatically albedo will decrease then it will result in global warming and even we are having many phenomena associated to the poles like polar vortex and also the moment of uh, permanent winds see you will have we are having permanent winds trade winds which will move in this direction and you are having anti trade winds or westerlies okay and again you are having the easterlies or polar easterlies so the people the climate experts are uh, the climate experts are uh, sorry experts are saying that because of this phenomena whole world will experience some sort of uh, trouble or concern no doubt in it this kind of events in geography are called as an event at a remote place will impact uh, our local climate that phenomena is called we have discussed in our routine mains classes if i am not wrong nobody is answering because everybody forgot that after writing group 1 prelims and upsc prelims nobody of course offline students are answering chilly meteorological events chilly meteorological events now take the example of el nino because of el nino it, we are not experiencing any rainfall today is uh, july sorry june 17th just it is like uh, the month of may so what the experts are saying it is a grave concern and again it is loss of biodiversity wide biodiversity you are having the unique polar uh, biodiversity polar bear some lichens and which will impact the tribal population in those region and not only that region the coastal areas will also be affected if ice will get converted into water automatically many small small islands may be subjected to the submersion it may impact the corals <laughs> and but very important is this ice sheet uh, loss will cause lot of uh, impact to the telemetrological events and only god knows what happens whether it will be drought or it will be flood you can see in the summer season telangana experienced rainfall march april even it caused havoc to the um, uh, i mean mango plantations and also paddy crop now it is a right time for the rainfall but we are not experiencing the rainfall so it is with regard to the arctic sea ice only one sentence according to a recent study published in the nature journal the loss of arctic ice sorry arctic sea ice is expected to continue in the coming decades even if carbon emissions are significantly reduced even all the world countries you know we are having a lot of protocols to uh, decrease the uh, impact of or to mitigate the i mean climate change in spite of the changes they are saying that we cannot stop the uh, conversion of arctic sea ice into water so such kind of things try to remember data from the intergovernmental panel on climate change ipcc indicate that the annual mean of arctic sea ice levels has been the lowest since at least 1850 while late summer levels have hit the lowest point in the last 1000 years so the condition is the condition needs the immediate action of the governments all should come together accordingly india also yes see one uh, see one observation the world will see its first sea ice free summer before 2050 
no eyes in that uh, to of course 2050 summer only god knows who will be there who will not be there the global emissions will drive temperature to beyond 4.5 degrees centigrade making the arctic ice free by 2081 to 2100 see now just i will tell you an example i am coming to hyderabad since my childhood days now i am staying in hyderabad due to vehicular pollution and due to conversion of hyderabad into concrete jungle causing harm to water bodies like hussein sagar etc etc no doubt the temperature the normal temperature of hyderabad has increased abnormally 15 years ago you cannot see air conditioners there may be but very less now even we are also having the air conditioner of course since uh, 20 years or 18 years we are having the air conditioners in the class that is the other thing because of man-made causes the temperature is increasing okay yeah of course the main important factor is the albedo feedback just now i told you what is meant by albedo all the things mentioned here we have discussed and even you know uh in the soils in the soil in the adjoining region of the arctic sea in the soil the water will be in the form of ice that is called as permafrost if i am not wrong what happens if that ice melts if that permafrost melts it will release the methane gas which is a greenhouse gas so again cascading effect try to remember that point also now a neolithic era celt was found by archaeological department of tamil nadu okay and what is celt it is a weapon stone weapon it is a weapon made by stone used by the people of the prehistoric period so you are having paleolithic age mesolithic age neolithic age chalcolithic age and you know neolithic age is known for the practice of agriculture so archaeologists say that these cells have been used by them to cut the trees or to plow etc so the site or this kind of things you may encounter in the examination so prehistoric you are having prehistory history the basic classification of the history is prehistory proto history and history prehistory you are having only artifacts to study the history artifacts what is artifacts ancient remains and for proto history you are having oral oral evidences oral literary evidences like vedas which were transmitted orally from one generation to other over a long period and here history you are having written evidences like i am writing on coins on the walls which we call as the inscriptions etc yes okay now a celt belonging to the neolithic period was discovered in putinatham by tamil nadu's department of archaeology the celt was used as either a plow or an axe and was made of dolerite stone celt just now i told it is a prehistoric tool made up of stone or metal typically used as a cutting or shaping implement this is the celt all this <clears throat> now menhir and megalithic sites menhil and megalithic site so it is related to the graves megalithic means big grave big stones used for the uh, burying practices are used as uh, some remembrance etc when you come to the menhir it is a monolithic stone monolithic stone so try to remember because now history and archaeology combinedly they are asking the question in future in one question they will test you geography economy polity and history yeah it is possible take the example of local self governing body they may test you in uh, uh, history and polity also 
even economy also. Okay, yes. The Tamil Nadu Department of Archaeology, Archaeology has declared five Menhir single stone monolithic and megalithic burial sites at Kudumanlai in Iro district as protected monuments. Yes, many states will declare that uh, as the protected monuments, which even we have discussed in other classes, many states. Okay, and even Iro district in Tamil Nadu is also famous for which agricultural product? Aero district of Tamil Nadu is also famous for which agricultural product many times we have encountered. <laughs> yes, yes, Mr. Shekhar. It is famous for turmeric. Turmeric. What is the scientific name of turmeric? Nowadays, every exam you are encountering the scientific names. Turmeric scientific name. Turmeric scientific name. Yes, curcuma longa. Curcuma longa. Yes, Manoj, Manoj, Manoj. Curcuma longa. Yes. Okay. So, Menhir, what is megalic? This is a megalith. You try to remember that. What are megaliths? A megalith is a large stone that has been used to construct a prehistoric structure or monument, either alone or together with other stones. You can see two or three stones put together. It is not a single stone. It is a megalith. Megalith. Four stones. Now you are having more source. Daily, if you spend time Simultaneously, uh, simultaneously, you can prepare for prelims, mains, etc. Of course, many of our students are doing that. Okay. A megalith is a large stone that has been used to construct a prehistoric structure, monument, etc. And type of megalithic structure may be circular or whatever may be the case. And uh, remember what is this coffin-like box? Monolith, it is nothing but menhir. Of course, these sort of things uh, uh, you can see in the NCRT books. Now, why New Development Bank is in news in India? New Development Bank. Of course, uh, IR is, is dealt by Amareshwar sir. And today he, today he could not come to the class. Because he thought that today is also holiday. As you enjoyed a lot of holidays in the pretext of writing the group on prelims. Anybody? Anybody? Why? So it seems that nobody is interested in current affairs. Nobody is studying the paper, newspaper. See, this new development bank is opening their regional office in Gujarat financial city, gift to cater the needs of India and Bangladesh. India and Bangladesh, and it is in this bank is served by BRICS nation, BRICS nations, and uh, they give financial assistance or they extend financial assistance only to the companies involving in the infrastructure and sustainable development, infrastructure and sustainable development. Okay, yes, New Development Bank has launched its. Indian Regional Office in Gujarat International Finance Tech City, Gift City. And it is the first Indian Smart Green City, Gift City in Gujarat. Just now I told you to cater the needs of India and Bangladesh. And uh, other offices of NDB, Africa, America and Eurasia. About the New Development Bank, established in 2014. See, they will ask the headquarter. Last exam, group on prelims. Just before uh, one week or 10 days, I told you, 
there is every chance of asking capitals or headquarters, not capitals, headquarters of various organizations. Of course, many people are saying that, sir, we have answered that question. If you know one thing, you can eliminate all the other. Its headquarters are at Shanghai. It is a multilateral bank. Members, BRICS nation, Bangladesh, UAE, Egypt. You have to remember this also. Okay? Yes. Innovation in areas such as lending in local currencies holds a AA plus credit rating. You know what is credit rating? Based on their balance sheet, I'm credit rating is given. And we have discussed in our routine classes, international credit rating agencies and also Indian credit rating agency. You are having international credit rating agencies guy like Shannad and Poor, Moody's, Fitch. And when you come to India, you are having Crystal, Onikra. Yes, Sibyl, C-I-B-I-L. Yes. Now, about Gift City. Gujarat International Financial Tech City is a central business district under construction in Gandhinagar district. It is India's first operational greenfield smart city and international financial service center. Only God knows what sort of questions will come in the examination. Okay? Yes. <laughs> Now, what is Kabban Reads? Of course, <laughs> not so important, but uh, a sort of inspiration. A sort of inspiration. A, uh, of course, a person who is well acquainted with the Bangalore will come to know about it. Kabban Park is in Bangalore. Kabban Park is in Bangalore. You know, many people will go to parks uh, to involve in walking. So, these people... On every Saturday, they will read the books and even they will exchange their views, which will give impetus for both knowledge and the literature. And the activities of these members was praised by the Modi. But as far as we are concerned, instead of watching unnecessary videos, YouTube videos, unnecessary videos, if it is necessary, you try to watch. It is better to have a to inculcate the habit of reading the books. Now, universe only is the boundary for civil services. If anybody says that, I will make you to crack the prelims, I will not accept his words. I will never use such kind of statements or sentences. Okay? Yes. Yeah, see, how all these people are keeping books in front of them. And I don't know how they couldn't read all such a long books. Okay. Now, of course, it is a concept. Seed saviors. Seed saviors. It is a purely concept. See, now, when you come to agriculture of India, agriculture of India, now you are having continuous farmer suicides, of course, because of various reasons socio-economic political reasons, no doubt in it. But nowadays, cost of inputs have increased. Take the example of seeds. For many seeds, MNCs are having the patents. Now, take the example of a cotton seed, Mahiko. Monsanto, a American company, is having the patent. Monsanto. And it is marketed in India by Maharashtra Hybrid Corporation. Maharashtra Hybrid Corporation. Okay? So what is happening earlier the seeds, when we were using our own seeds, the cost of inputs was very less. Now the seeds are maybe running into uh, 2,000 per kg or 3,000 per kg. So what is meant by the concept of seed saviors? A group of farmers in Medak district of Telangana they started saving their own seeds to sow in the coming seasons. Such that, what happens? The cost of inputs will decrease and even the local seeds will adapt in a fair manner to the local conditions. So you can use this concept in writing the mains. Now, 
they they may ask you in the examination scores is a platform of irda sebi etc so scores is a platform of sebi security exchange board of india to settle the grievances of the people just now i told you sebi security exchange board of india is the regulatory authority of the stock markets so you are having many stock brokers say iifl zeroda upstock okay and even every bank like hdfc icici they are having their own platforms and they will allow us to open the dmat accounts and through dmat accounts we can trade we can purchase or sell the stocks and through dmat account you can apply for the initial public offer etc etc so in involving in such kind of uh, things your breaker may do some mistake maybe deliberately or accidentally or technically then who have to solve this problem so scores is a e platform where you can uh, forward your grievance and in in no time that grievance is addressed by the sebi okay yes now what is captagon pills i i i hope many people will know that captagon pills captagon pills <laughs> nobody so nobody is interested in studying current affairs because nowadays exams are like that but there is no there is not a great difference between the people who are pursuing hard work and who are sitting idle only shakuni is uh, helping them of course even i too got depressed So okay, okay. Nobody is answering from offline and online. Captagon pills are used to suppress the hunger and to increase the alertness. Generally used by the maybe terrorists. Who knows? Captagon pills. The report suggests that the Islamic State, IS, and Syrian fighters widely consumed captagon to increase alertness and suppress appetite during their gorilling. battles so you have to remember this common things who knows they will give the match the following match the following captagon pills this pill match the following you can see the sent the questions okay yes now who wrote the book rebels against the raj because you people should know that the people who are continuously uh, reading newspaper rebels against the raj who is the author of the book rebels against the raj raj is nothing but our colonial era british raj british raj upsc aspirants huh? nobody nobody is responding whether i don't know whether you people are uh... yes 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 manoj kumar ramachandra guha ramachandra guha wrote the book rebels against the raj because and western fighters for india's freedom i told you several times many many europeans fought for the cause of indians take the example of sir william jones he established asiatic asiatic society of bengal take the example of uh, augustus um, hip uh, hippon uh, sorry augustin hickey his newspaper highlighted the uh, bad position of indians any person many people many people 
rebels against the raj western and even many western people were uh, convicted in uh, one conspiracy case if i am not wrong kavanpur or kanpur conspiracy, i mean conspiracy case western people were also imprisoned ramachandra guha's book rebels against the raj western fighters for india's freedom has won the elizabeth longford prize for historical biography 2023 try to remember this there is no other way any other way now you are uh, totally experienced what sort of questions they will ask the theme of the book the book tells the story of seven foreigners who joined india's freedom struggle against the british rule of course many people became the staunch followers of uh, our father of uh, nation mahatma gandhi <laughs> about the award the elizabeth longford prize for historical biography was established in 2003 now they will ask about this not ramachandra guha or award they will not ask about ramachandra guha or his book they will ask about this award when it was established which authority will give that award the elizabeth longford prize for historical biography was established in 2003 in memory of elizabeth longford the british author biographer and historian 5000 pound prize is awarded annually for a historical biography published in the preceding year yes it celebrated its 20th anniversary this year the prize for the prize recognizes books that shed light on the lives of notable individuals and their impact on history yeah now hamari bhasha hamari virasat okay to save our language minister of state for culture inaugurated an exhibition under the azadi ka amrit mahotsav hamari bhasha hamari virasat to celebrate the 75th international archives so a manuscripts belonging to 5th 6th century were displayed and that manuscript were written on the bark of birch trees birch b i r c h and even if i am not wrong we will encounter this birch tree in uh, uh, maybe neolithic age place of birch burj ham place of birch okay yes the birch bark folios documents written on piece of the inner layer of the bark of birch trees were found in the kashmir region and contain both canonical related to religion and non canonical jain and buddhist works that throw light on the evolution of many religious philosophical literatures yes you know at the time of buddhism and jainism along with buddhism and jainism there were other uh, i mean profounders like ajit kesakemlin charvaka etc uh, the question with regard to ajit kesakemlin appeared in the examination maybe group 1 or upsc curry ishad mango it is a mango variety belonging to karnataka region got the gi tag you know if uh, one get the gi tag it will be held with them for a period of 10 years of course it can be renewed and for next 10 years also you are having both indian gi tag and also international the curry ishad mango prominently grown in ankola taluka of uttar canada has bagged the gi tag according to the geographical indication journal of the government the curry ishad is accepted as one of the finest quality mangoes because of aroma taste and pulp etc of course last week i was in bangalore even i tasted a mango it was very good of course the cost was also uh, more than the taste the cost the cost was more than the taste which i enjoyed by paying the bill all my enjoyment <laughs> faded away in the hotel southern ruchi is very very popular hotel in bangalore okay yes just for fun about gi tag a gi is primarily an agricultural natural or manufactured product handicrafts and okay one question which uh, item in india was given the first gi tag which item in india was given first gi tag we have discussed in our old classes yes 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 offline students yes yes 
darjeeling tea darjeeling tea and even we have discussed which uh, item in telangana was given first gi tag in telangana which item was given first gi tag <laughs> Yes, Pochampalli Ikkat. Okay, Pochampalli Ikkat. Yes, yes, yes. Nice. Okay. A GI is primarily an agricultural, national, or, or manufactured product originating from a different geographical territory. Even our Tirupati Laddu is also having the GI tag. The registration of a GI is valid for a period of 10 years. It can be renewed for further 10 years. At the international level, GI tag are covered as a component of intellectual property rights under the Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property. GI is also governed by the WTO agreement on trade-related aspects, that is TRIPS. You are having TRIPS and TRIMS. And in India, Geographical indication tradition is administered by the geographical indications of goods which came into force with effect from September 2003. Try to remember all this. Of course, I will forward the PDF. Now, dimethyl ether fuel tractor. So, IIT Kanpur students have initiated or in, initiated an innovative idea. Dimethyl ether can be used as a tractor fuel. Of course, earlier, the same thing is used as a fuel for other purposes. Now, they want to run the IC engine, internal combustion engine. How you will get this dimethyl ether? It is from natural gas and even it is also derived from the agricultural waste, bio waste, by a process. So, dimethyl ether, try to remember it. Dimethyl ether is a renewable and clean burning Alternative fuel that can be used in various applications. Yes, for cooking food, etc., etc. DMA, DMA is a colorless gas. It is produced from natural gas, coal, biomass, or renewable sources through a synthesis process. It is it is used extensively in chemical industry. It is a long. Uh, it is in use from long back. Now they want to use for the transportation. Now, last one, CIPRI. It is a research institute and it has given the data of uh, the countries having the nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons. Now, you are having geopolitical tensions between Russia, Ukraine, again, even Russia and NATO. And I don't know what happens. <laughs> CIPRI. The Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, try to remember this, has released its annual assessment highlighting the increase in nuclear weapons as countries pursue force modernization and expansion plans. See, my personal opinion, we are having the international human rights covenants. If you implement that, whether there is need of such weapons, Then what is the use of uh, UN covenants? Instead of spending money for these weapons, you should spend for the upliftment of the weaker sections. Of course, it is my personal view. Views may change from one person to other. Findings. Nine nuclear armed countries, USA, Russia, UK, France, China, India, Pakistan, North Korea, Israel. USA and Russia possess almost 90% of the nuclear weapons, superpowers. 90%. Deploy nuclear warheads. USA largest number followed by Russia, France, UK. Inventory more with Russia. And countries with no deployed nuclear warheads. India, China, Pakistan, they have not deployed. Okay? Yes. About CIPRI. Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. Headquarter, Solna, Stockholm, try to remember. Sweden, established in 1966. is an independent international institute based in Stockholm. It provides data, analysis and recommendations for armed conflict, etc. Military expenditure and disarmament, how many people died, etc. Okay? 
yes it's all about this week's current affair thank you thank you for cooperating thank you